Okay, welcome back everyone. Oh, welcome for the first time, for those joining us for the first time. Um, this is the uh, Mining the Northwest Careers Education and Training Sessions. Um, I'm very happy to be moderating the fourth session again on behalf of Lakehead University. As always, I'd like to thank our, our primary sponsors, the Thunder Bay Community Economic Development Commission and the Canadian Tradex for sponsoring today's session, as well as all those mines and gold and silver sponsors who are sponsoring the event, the event as a whole. The presenters this morning will speak for about uh, 15 minutes. There'll be a five minute Q&A. And as always, just feel free to use the raise your hand feature in Zoom or to post your question in the chat box and we'll, we'll do our best to respond. It's my great pleasure this morning to introduce Wilson Yeo, uh, Director of Business Development at MITAX and Bill Maloney, Director of Industry Research Partnerships at Lakehead University, who today will provide an overview of MITAX and a few of the different pro funding programs they offer industries looking to partner with academia. And as personal experience, I've benefited from these in my research. So I, I, to all those industry partners out there, I thoroughly recommend you pay close attention. Uh, and with that, no further ado, I'll hand over to uh, Wilson and Bill. Awesome. Thank you, Pete. And thank you, everyone, for having us today. Uh, my name is Wilson Luo. I'm a director for business development at MyTax. And I've been with MyTax for almost two and a half years now and working quite closely with Lakehead University, despite being based in London and specifically working with Bill uh, quite closely and doing, doing a lot of great work in developing collaborative research projects. So um, I'll jump right in. So if you're not familiar with MyTax, we are a national independent non-for-profit organization and um, we are federally funded and provincially funded and our mandate is to support uh, and growth and innovation within Canada. And how we do that is by <clears throat> funding collaborative research between universities and colleges uh, and, and our partner organizations, which come from industry, they come from not-for-profits. Um, we also can work with municipalities and hospitals as you'll see in the next few slides. And where we differ from tri-council is that we do fund all disciplines of research and all sectors of research. In fact, we've, we've had many mining projects uh, in the North before. So, um, you know, something to keep in mind. And MyTex has been around since 1999, so over 22 years in operation, and we really are at scale to fund and, and support your R&D needs. We currently work with over 70 post-secondary institutions within Canada. We fund tens of thousands of projects um, in the last few years. We work with over 7,000 company partners in Canada. And I think what's most exciting is that we were a line item in the federal budget this year for over 708 million for the next five years. So that's essentially a doubling of our federal funding. And um, what that really means is that we can do a lot more. And my role really is to direct as much of this funding to the institutions as well as the companies that I, that I work with. So if you've heard about MyTax before, you might have heard of some of our program names, which can be sometimes very confusing um, because a lot of them are similar in some ways in terms of funding, but also very different. Um, so today I'll focus mostly on Accelerate and BSI or the Business Strategy Internship, um, mostly on the BSI just because that's what I'm working with Bill on. But I will mention the Accelerate program because it is our flagship program and is meant for research collaboration between universities and colleges and, and companies, whereas the BSI is more so for innovation and development. So together, these two programs really, really do cover the full spectrum you know, of research all the way to development um, and will probably be a good fit for most of your opportunities as you, as you consider projects with, with academia. So I'll talk a little bit about BSI 1.0, as we're calling it, which essentially was a pilot program that we launched last year and, and over the summer. To, and it was a response to COVID-19 to help companies pivot essentially the, their COVID uh, or their, their company model or their business model uh, in response to the pandemic and you know, what was considered the new normal at the time. So it was, the program was meant to connect companies with business students specifically. And a lot of them were, you know, consulting essentially on how to move their business online or how to change their company operations uh, to adapt to the new normal. But this year we revisited the program to, and we thought to ourselves, it's a great program and how can we expand the scope to help you know, companies in general, uh, you know, outside of business. So we're calling it BSI 2.0. We did relaunch this program this summer. And here's a list of, you know, example project types and uh, by no means is it exclusive, but the ones highlighted in red are what I thought would be kind of of interest to the audience here. So, you know, projects that are creating or commercializing Canadian technology or IP, um, projects that are developing new business models for Canadian companies. 
if you're addressing a social or environmental issue uh, that is important to Canadian society or even implementing evidence-informed strategies to address a specific challenge. And this is no longer limited to business students. So, you know, maybe you need to consult with a biology, uh, some, somebody from biology or somebody from geology, for example. Anything that is considered innovative and, you know, helpful to your company could qualify as BSI project. So, um, a, a really good program and complements our Accelerate program. Um, you know, that you know, if something that isn't strictly research, but still really innovative and beneficial to you, you know, this kind of covers that, that, that part of the, of the spectrum. So this slide's important because it does depict, you know, the pieces that need to be in place to be eligible for my tax funding, not just for the BSI, but for Accelerate and, and the Elevate program as well, which I didn't talk too much about. But essentially you do need a professor um, from a university or a college um, supporting and, you know, they're kind of the main uh, submitter of the grant application. You have a partner organization, so in this case, a Canadian company, a uh, non-for-profit organization. We even work with Crown Corps, municipalities, and, and hospitals as well. And then you have the interns who are the actual ones doing the research or doing the, the, the development work for you. So they can be from colleges, undergraduate students, grad students, so master's or PhD. We're uh, even allowing recent grads if they're within two years of graduation and Lakehead has that set up. So, you know, if they're a recent Lakehead grad, we can, we can work with them as well. And then postdoctoral fellows as well. So in terms of the actual funding amount, <clears throat> it's not a set grant amount. It's not a $50,000 award or a $100,000 award, but rather it's really flexible and modular in terms of the size and scope of the project, as well as, you know, to match the contribution that you're, you're, you're willing to make um, to support the project. So the smallest project we'll fund is a $10,000 award. So that's considered one block. And then half of it comes from the partner and half of it comes from my tax. And then you can scale this up as needed. So in theory, the BSI program can support up to 90 of these blocks, right? So that means a $900,000 project. And then for Accelerate, I will mention there is no upper limit. So that's for research. And I think the largest Accelerate grant we've ever funded was $6 million, right? Something to keep in mind, we were absolutely happy to fund larger projects, but you know, happy to fund the smaller ones as well. Usually those are the most impactful ones. So this is a one-to-one -one match. Um, and we do have special initiatives to increase the matching from my tax, right? So if you're an, an SME, a small medium enterprise under 500 employees, we are offering a three-to-one match. So as opposed to the five and five model to, to make up that 10K block, um, your contribution would only be 2.5K and then my tax would match it at three to one with 7,500 to make up that 10K. We also have an indigenous pathways initiative and what that is, is, you know, our way of recognizing and, and committing to work with Indigenous peoples and creating equitable access to our programs. So this is our way of lowering the barrier to access for projects that involve Indigenous peoples or mandates. So essentially contributions from, the, you know, uh, for projects are halved um, that include partner organizations that are at least 50% owned by individuals who self-identify as Indigenous, um, or if they include interns that self-identify as Indigenous, um, non-for-profit organizations uh, whose board of directors are composed of at least 50% self-identified uh, self Indigenous peoples, or if the mandate of the organization themselves are Indigenous focused, right? So you can see there's many, many categories um, that this Indigenous Pathways program would apply. And certainly there is still a lot more that my tax can do, but this is our way of our, our first step in towards, you know, creating more equitable access to our, to our funding um, for projects that, you know, that, that fall within this mandate. So there is an application for BSI and same with Accelerate, but I'll talk mostly about the BSI. It's pretty simple and straightforward. We have a portal, you know, most people can prepare the application in, in a few days. And, uh, it does go out for signatures for, from all parties. And it typically takes about two to four weeks for, for review, um, which isn't very long at all for the funding. It's not competitive, so you can apply at any time. And there is a really high success rate rate. Um, I would say it's about 95% or higher. And that's, you know, the reason that is because you'll be working with myself and Bill to make sure the, the application looks uh, in good shape before we hit that submit button. So I'll end up by talking a little bit about how the funding cycle actually works, right? And this applies to the BSI program, you know, for development and innovation, um, accelerate for research or most of our programs. So, you know, in a, in a typical scenario, you as the partner are, are willing to contribute some amount of money to work on a project with Lakehead we would can collect that your contribution on behalf of Lakehead. We would match it at a minimum of one to one. If it falls under the SME discount or the Indigenous Pathways program, we would match it three to one. And then we would cut, send those funds over to Lakehead. 
the professor would open a grant account um, from which they can pay the interns, you know, the trainees that are actually working on the project, um, as well as any project related expenses. If there's consumables or software or subscriptions or travel that needs to be done during the project, you know, there are eligible costs for that. And then the trainees will work on the project, you know, between Lakehead and, and, and yourself. So I think I'll end it there and I'll pass it to Bill. I think he has a few slides as well, but a huge thank you to our federal and, and provincial funding partners. Without them, we can't do the great work that we do. And, and, and thanks for your attention. I'll pass it over to you, Bill. Set to unmute myself, sorry about that. Let me just share it again here. Yeah, so just to uh, carry on from what Wilson was saying here, can everyone see my screen? Yeah? Yep, I can see it, Bill. Um, so yeah, so the, the business strategy internship program um, is something that Lakehead University is working with MyPEX on, and we're, we're just trying to share that information with uh, the region and local organizations and industry. It's a way to tap into some of the faculty and students at Lakehead University. So we have two campuses, uh, one in Thunder Bay, one in Aurelia, approximately 9,000 undergraduate and graduate students and uh, over 300 faculty members. Um, so how it works on our end, if, if, if you have uh, an innovation or a challenge you're working on and, and you wanna do a uh, tap into this funding program, reach out to myself or, or, or Wilson and um, we can help you through the opportunity. So. Once we have a, an opportunity identified, I'll reach out to some faculty members and some students. We'll get some, some resumes and we can send them to you and, and you can uh, find a candidate to, that you would like to work with on, on a specific project. Um, Dr. Hollings already presented on this. Um, uh, we have a lot of uh, capacity in, in mining and, and geology uh, through SESME multidisciplinary team of over 30 researchers in many different disciplines. So this is a, you know, a, a, a point to uh, contact and reach out to to find the right resource. Um, but I'd also like to talk about uh, some other uh, facilities within Lakehead. Um, so yesterday we heard a lot of presentations on a lot of opportunity in the region and mining, but they also touched upon some of the challenges. Uh, one of them I heard was, uh, equipment management, so ways to understand, better understand equipment management and scheduling. Um, and there's large data sets within mining. So tapping into Lakehead University's data lab uh, can really assist by leveraging the technology to, to make these complex challenges more manageable. Um, so it's big data analysis um, and AI machine learning. So that's something that we can really explore together and, and see if that's a way to help your organization. Um, and just I wanted to throw in a few more possible examples of projects. We heard a lot yesterday about workforce retention and attracting workforce. So another great feature of the uh, business strategy internship funding program is it's a way to get those, uh, those future staff, um, future high quality personnel into your, into your organization, uh, working on a project with you and that could lead to uh, a future employee. Um, there's also workforce safety, um, through, our, through our MBA program, we can do uh, feasibility studies through our business administration. Um, there's also human resources as well. We heard a lot yesterday about water treatment and uh, sustainability, and that's another um, huge opportunity to do, to do some of these projects as well as supply chain management. Um, so again, there's a lot of opportunity and I'm here to help uh, find the faculty member, help find the students and work with Wilson to to make sure we have uh, successful applications. So if you wanna reach out, here's my contact information and happy to, to discuss this opportunity with you. Thank you. Thank you, Bill and Wilson. That was a, a great presentation there. Um, I don't see any questions immediately. Um, so maybe I can start that off with, with Wilson. Can you give us an idea of what the success rate is for applications to these various programs? Yep, so the success rate um, for BSI and Accelerate is about 
95% or higher. In fact, I, you know, not to brag, but I've never had an application uh, not, not get funded, right? And the Elevate program, which is a postdoctoral specific program, that has a, it, that one is competitive and that one's, you know, the success rate varies by applicant pool, but I would say it hovers around 70%. Yeah, those are those are really good numbers from someone who, who works in the academic field that the, the, <laughs> that's, uh, that's some pretty high success rates and i know again from personal experience you guys work closely with applicants to make sure the the proposals look good before they're even getting submitted so i, I think that that helps from a an industry perspective right that you're you're willing to put those efforts in to, to try and make these these applications be successful right it's it's a it's a great attitude yes exactly yeah uh okay i don't see any questions kevin are there any questions in the chats at the moment no peter okay well um we're a little ahead of time but i think that's okay uh we can take a give everyone a, a little break now our next presentation will start again at 10 40 and as always we'll i'll encourage you all to leave this zoom meeting join back in at the next one. Uh, you can find the link on the site. And again, thanks to all our sponsors, uh, CEDC for the, the, the morning session and all the various industry sponsors who are helping today. Uh, thank you very much. And we'll see you at the next session.